Enga ho mahi e rau langa te rama tēnā koutou. Whakahana rei tia te pane o te whare o patato te whero whero. Kingi tuhe tia, kai te mihi aki. Waikato awa, waikato waka, taupiri maunga, tēnā koutou katoa. E te whakamanenga, nau mai haere mai, whakatau mai, tēnā rā tātou katoa. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome you uh, to the fourth and final uh, lecture uh, in our 2015 Winter Lecture Series. The Winter Lecture Series is an opportunity for um, members of the university staff and members of the community uh, to share their ideas on a wide range of topics uh, that uh, we think are of interest uh, to the people of Hamilton and the Waikato. Uh, tonight's uh, lecture is a particularly important topic uh, for Hamilton and one of great interest to me. Uh, having arrived uh, here in Hamilton six months ago, uh, knowing virtually nothing about what I was coming to at the point uh, when I accepted the job. Uh, and I've noticed some very interesting aspects uh, of Hamilton culture and the way people in Hamilton think about uh, what, uh, what it's like uh, to live in Hamilton. Personally, uh, after 19 years in Wellington, I get up every morning thinking that I should have left Wellington years ago and that Hamilton is actually a great place to live. But I've been intrigued. <laughs> yeah. I've been intrigued by some interesting uh, ways in which people in Hamilton express their interest in living here. For example, one of the great ones I've struck many times uh, when you ask people why it's good to live in Hamilton, they say, well, it's close to Taupo and Tauranga and Raglan and I think, oh, that's an interesting way to, uh, uh, to express what's good about uh, Hamilton. Uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, tonight um, uh, your host uh, for the lecture and the comments of our different panellists uh, is Jan Marie, one of New Zealand's most successful female comedians. She brought her own cheering section as well, which is very, uh, a very good thing to do in her role, I'm sure. Um, uh, she's won uh, a number of uh, comedy awards, including the Billy T Award and the Comedy Guild Award for the Best uh, Female Comedian, uh, as well as uh, receiving uh, the New Zealand International Comedy Festival's uh, Supreme Award. So she's obviously very well known uh, to many of you in the audience, uh, very experienced uh, in these sorts of situations. Uh, so Jan Marie, uh, welcome and over to you. Nā mai haere mai. Tihei Māori ora. E ngā manga, e ngā waka, e ngā reo, e tumutu. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, ko Jan Marie tāko ingoa. Ano kiri kiri roa o ko rimu taka te maunga ko awa kairangi te awa ko ko kiri te marae ko tarada te iwi ko Peter Vince roa ko Josephina Perno taku tūpuna no reira tēnā kōto tēnā kōto tēnā no tato katoa tu te maunga iwi that's what I'm talking about. That's the Kiwi way, and nowhere do I feel better uh, than Hamilton whenever I do that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honour to be here this evening. Uh, my name's Jan Marie. This is what I look like if you've never seen me before. Um, yeah. These people we're going to introduce in a moment. What we're here to talk about this evening, you're aware because obviously you're consumers of uh, social media. Love the Tron is the number one trending uh, tweet, Twitter feed at the moment. Um, <laughs> The um, Ode to Hamilton um, tweet yesterday jammed Twitter. Um, so several disgruntled Twitter users were stuck with my face going, are you proud of Hamilton? 
Um, <laughs> and we, we certainly are. Hamilton City, the jewel of the Waikato, as my dear departed friend Ewan Gilmore called it. We have gardens, we have a zoo, Waitoma Caves, the museum, a stadium and a casino and a river runs through it. Over 150,000 groovinators populate this wonderful town. We have dodgy taxi drivers and risky public toilet activity. We have a 48-year-old rural big day out and model, uh, motels that stretch for as far as the eye can see. We have a farming festival, yes, we have a balloon festival, and we have two pack and saves. <laughs> there are places that don't even have one, Cambridge. Um, <laughs> walks, cafes, we have riffraff, we have the Outback, which is quite possibly where Hamilton earned the reputation of being the home of chlamydia. But I think you'll find a few years ago our very forward-thinking Mayor Julie Hardacre sent some women of ill repute on a bus to Gisborne and now they are the home of chlamydia. <laughs> Hashtag top job. Um, we, we have an East Ward, a West Ward, theatres, a polytech, bogans, a university, a research station, dairy uh, milk, goat's milk and the highest amount of processing, meat processing plants per capita in New Zealand. We are about acceptance, we're about groove and vibration, we're about mad energy. This evening we celebrate that, we pay homage to it through six people, fine people who have come to us this evening from a number of different backgrounds. The first of which is Julia Cook, who's the young lady there, look at her with her firm skin and her reasons to live. Um, <laughs> Julia is an alumna of Waikato University. Uh, she did communications here. She returned from her OE to work in Auckland, never mind, eh, uh, at Tourism New Zealand, but has recently come home and is now in comms and marketing at Smart Track. A round of applause for Julia. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Jason Dawson, an ex Whangarei import. Notice how I said that, Whangarei. Uh, he's an import to the Tron of about three years. Uh, Jason is a full-time tweeter, but in his spare time, a customer relationship management expert and brands and design and marketing guru. That's a massive word. A round of applause for Jason. <laughs> Welcome to our town, brother. <laughs> Professor Robin Longhurst is known to many of you. She was waving out, like, because this isn't TV, we can see you. Um, <laughs> And uh, a geographer, and obviously involved in, the, in geography here. Oh, it's all up there. Ah, oh. oh, seems fine. We'll just let, but there might be people here who are sight impaired, so we'll just can, we'll continue for the sake of my awesome voice talking. Um, a geographer and the University of Waikato's Pro Vice Chancellor of Education. She's a Waikato graduate and has authored several publications on gendered spaces, including homes, malls, and domestic gardens. Of course, we have the largest mall in the Southern Hemisphere, um, so I'm sure you've got plenty of commentary on that. Paul Ma, oh, a round of applause. Hall Mata Pagi Pagi, more Dr. Robin. Oh no, you're not a doctor, you're a professor. Are you a doctor? Have you got some plans to do some kind of doctoring? Okay, if anybody has a medical emergency, she's the lady. Um, she's got a sewing kit and plenty of spare time. She's a very keen amateur. Um, right, the axe man, Paul Martin, lead vocalist and guitarist for World War IV, bassist for Devil's Skin. He, his long running radio show, The Axe Attack, started at the Waikato University in 1987. Uh, it's been through different vi visors and now it is uh, with iHeartRadio, I believe. Uh, so you can still tune in on iHeartRadio.com. Um, <laughs> Paul is also licensed to work with radioactive material, which might explain his bad choices. Ladies and gentlemen, The Axe Man, Paul Martin. <laughs> Former New Zealand Idol contestant and Amazing Racer. That's right, it was on The Real Amazing Race. His wife is here as well. You can get photographs afterwards, totes. Um, Jesse is part of the Hamilton Mafia Project, a musician and a youth worker based at Hamilton West School, Westside. Please, a round of applause for the fabulous Jesse O'Brien. <laughs> and of course, in Hamilton, where binge drinking is more a way of life than it is a pastime, uh, we had to have someone from Scotland on the panel this evening. <laughs> The Director of Chow Hill Architects in Hamilton, he's a proponent of central city development, which I would personally love to see, although my friend Brendan Lovegrove does say in Hamilton, the higher you go, the less it costs because of the view. Um, <laughs> not that I agree with that, it's just saying. Um, central city development and partial to a drink. See? Uh, at his favourite bar, The Wonder Horse. Uh, please, a round of applause for Brian Square. 
Righty, if I got any of that wrong, um, blame the PowerPoint. Okay, we are now at 6.10 or 10 past 6 uh, this evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to conduct this in an orderly fashion, which for Hamilton could go anyway. Uh, the police may arrive. That's just another textured excitement that we can offer you this evening at the university. We've got a series of questions that our panellists are going to answer. Um, obviously, your uh, involvement in heckling is absolutely fine and welcome uh, as we go along because this is a community event and you are that community who've come out this evening from your homes. It's a dangerous choice to come out into the world. So uh, it doesn't matter where you live, Hamilton, anywhere, right? So good on you for getting out and getting in amongst it this evening. Our first question that I will pose to our, our panel this evening is um, the hidden gems of Hamilton. I'm sure if you think about hidden gems yourselves, you would think about a place or a couple of places that you find yourself selfishly loving and hoping no one else finds out about. And yes, I'm thinking myself of the contemporary garden, the American contemporary garden at the Hamilton Gardens. I love being able to go there when there's no one else there and sit in the Southwester chairs and imagine that's my house. And then somebody arrives, because it's Hamilton Gardens and everyone goes there, and they've usually got a child, and it's like, Bleh! and you just want to show the child how to swim face first. And <laughs> it's not necessarily appropriate, but those little hidden gems of Hamilton that bring out the love, and bring out the love marks for all of us. I'm going to throw this over, first of all, I think, to the Axeman. A lot of years in Hamilton, in the underground. Oh, a lot of, yes. And uh, above ground, some of them too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see gems, hidden gems, so there's just so many. I mean, I'm a, I'm a sucker for rivers and lakes and large bodies of water and just keeping the negative ions up, you know. Um, Hamilton's really good for that, and there's so many spots along the river um, in, in the Rose Gardens, you know. Um, I got married in the Rose Gardens, so it's a pretty special spot there for me. Um, but there's... Oh. It's enough of it's that. It's unbelievable it's how people that. just yeah, come to the party yeah. just like that. Just like, oh, yeah, I bet it was adorable. Probably not the only one, though. Anyone else get married in the Rose Gardens here? Yeah, yeah see? Yeah. See? Because it's good, right? <laughs> Did you get married to each other? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> um, no, <clears throat> excuse me. There's um, yeah, just so many beautiful spots, and, and like I say, I'm, I'm just a, a, a sucker for large bodies of water, so there's so many gorgeous little spots by the river. I can't tell you where they are because <clears throat> there won't be a hidden gem anymore. Yeah. True. True. But I've got several, quite often I have to keep them moving along because people come along. <laughs> but I, I mean, we've got a kind of a timeshare going on a couple of little bits. <laughs> and it's just a, just a little grassy outlook with a, with a river vista, really. Grassy and knoll. Yeah, grassy a knoll, knoll you nice. could say. But um, yeah, for me, the, the, the hidden gems and the treasures and the place where I sort of balance myself uh, anywhere by the river, really, yeah. and only a couple of places by the lake. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're lucky we, the river. we do have sensational spaces by water, though, which for yeah. a landlocked city, you know, is incredible the access we have to our, our beautiful river. So exactly, and, and obviously with so many boffins in the audience, I don't know about the, the effect of large bodies of water on the, um, the polarity of the air and the, the negative ions that abound in places like that. And they're really, really good for you. It's calming. And the enemy of that, the opposite of that, is um, large buildings, lots of air conditioning, lots of computer screens. That the air gets positively charged. Auckland. Auckland. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't going to say. I wasn't going to be the first one to say that. You know. I'm kind of glad that I. <laughs> Go, Jesse. So no, shall we? Shall we hand it over to the next bed then? Indeed. What's where are your hidden gems? Um, I think my gems hidden in there. <laughs> there's a, there is a few gems hidden in here, but they're staying in there. Don't search for them later. Uh, um, my hidden gems um, are probably less places and more people. I'm all about the people. Um, if, if you don't know who Joshua Middleton is and you want to see Hamilton in a different light, then you need to get onto social media, Google+, Plus, which still exists apparently, um, Facebook and Twitter. Joshua Middleton is a photographer and some of the faces that we see often down Victoria Street who live there, um, he takes a fantastic street portraits, buildings, angles, just things you don't see and you go, whoa, that's, that's my city, that's unbelievable, just incredible insight, so um, that sort of stuff and uh, I think the, the unknowns, the great unknowns, the best kept secrets of Hamilton is the incredible music scene that we have, that, or, or, or should I say the musicians that we have because 
You know, we've got bands like, like Devil Skin who are cracking it, and people don't realise how much they're cracking it, how well they're doing. We have bands like Catch a Fire who are touring the world and playing massive shows, and they are proudly Hamilton. And it's just, um, it's hardly known. And I think it's 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 exciting that this it, it's very it makes things vibrant and it's um yeah oh, it's awesome and I like I like what Paul said too I like all those places <laughs> I'm part of the timeshare. <laughs> it's interesting though because I think the human element of Hamilton is a very binding factor of of what makes Hamilton quite totally. a treasure. Totally. Um, our people and mm. and how they how they just quietly go about being awesome yeah. rather than yeah. having to be on the cover of every magazine or popping up everywhere in social feeds and things. They're mm. actually just quietly getting about it, being awesome, putting their pants on one leg at a time, not going <laughs> on too much about it, Kim Kardashian. Anyway, <laughs> Professor, Professor, Professor Robin, where are your favourite places? I'm kind of hoping maybe you wouldn't get to me on this one. Okay. But, but, but <laughs> I, was thinking, I was thinking about it and I was thinking, what, what little place might nobody else know about? What might you know about? Mm. And maybe a couple of people in this audience do. But at the university, I only found this out the other day, even though I've been here for half my life, there is a vice chancellor's years. tree grove. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You might not have known that, <laughs> but it's got native trees and each time a vice chancellor moves out of the role, another kauri tree is planted and it is a very special little spot. And I was so kind of struck when I found out about this because I've been here forever. It's over by Orchard Park. It's very tranquil. It's a uh, it, it's nice way of kind of recognising the contribution of the... Sounds like I'm doing a plug for the university now, doesn't it? But it's a, it's a nice little spot and I never knew about it until the other day. And I thought it's probably one of the few places that people in this audience would not know about. Point towards it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That way. That's the bar. <laughs> <laughs> no, the bar's that way, Jesse. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, that's, that's by Orchard lovely. Park. By Orchard Park. By and Orchard Park, the halls of residence. There's a wonderful so this, little grove of, of um, native trees. And this that, is somewhere that, anyone can go. It is. And, so um, and I went because our, our former Vice-Chancellor, Roy Crawford, planted a tree there the other day. In the rain, it, it rained gently as we were there. That would be the tears of the tupuna, blessing yeah. it. It was perfect. very... No, and it is. It's perfect right, tree planting with it rains. a very nice moment. Yeah, yeah, it would be. Yeah. And I think that's a really interesting part. You know, we've speak, spoken to three people so far and we've got to move on. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> in, that, but say, in saying that, though... The fact that already everyone's talking about people and talking about land and mm -hmm. our roots in Māoridom and our, our richness at that level in this, in this part of the country, just it doesn't it speak volumes to already that what we, are, what we are we can't escape from, which is our land and our people, you know, whenua, tāngata, it's great. Okay, we're going to move on to the Scotsman. Okay. Apart from the bars... <laughs> Any hidden gem bars we should know about? Yeah, it's funny because um, I'm quite an adventurous guy. So I, whenever we go anywhere, my wife says to me, can we relax? And I say, no, we've got to go and discover things. And so I'm always going all over the place. And I discover things. I come back thinking I've found this wonderful spot. And I tell people and they say, didn't you know about that? <laughs> and, 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 and all of a sudden I realize that, you know, I've been sort of had my head on, under, under a bed somewhere and I haven't noticed it. But you know, a classic example would be that I'm nipping down Victoria Street and saying, well, I wonder, wonder what's down this laneway. Let's go down this wonder horse <laughs> is down this laneway. Or, or, or going along um, Nisbet Street by the, by the Wintech there, and what's at the end of it? Oh, Mavis made to order. So mm -hmm. basically, and contrary to the stereotype, I don't actually imbibe too much, but I do enjoy a nice one at Wonder Horse. And, and also uh, Mavis made to order. So those kind of things, you know, going down the river with uh, my wife and I, we'll go down the river on a bike, push bike or whatever, and popping up and finding a suburban cafe like Cinnamon or, uh, you know, somewhere else, you know, it's quite nice, discovery, and as I say, everyone knows about them, I'm just discovering them myself now, but uh, those kind of things, yeah, great. Uh, nice Probably. one, and, and what about yourself, Julia? What are your hidden treasures? Well, one thing that I've been pleasantly surprised about recently coming back to Hamilton was the, um, the coffee and the cafe scene in Hamilton is mm. awesome at the moment. Um, mm. It's so great to be able to take our friends from Auckland that come down to visit and show them this great cafe. Um, and, and show off Hamilton. I think Hamilton East is probably the exciting thing for me at the moment um, with the ice cream shop, Duck Island Ice Cream <laughs> coming in, Two Birds Eatery. It just feels like it's starting to get a little bit of a precinct feel. 
It's starting to get a bit more like the West side. I'm sorry, West is best, just quietly. <laughs> just, just saying, just putting it out there. <laughs> Interesting you should say that, though, because there is, I find the, the coffee scene has exploded in the last 15 years in Hamilton, and it's become a real pastime for Hamiltonians as well to go out and have coffee now, you know, as opposed to... Go down the, the cafe for a bit of lunch before you head off to whatever. Anyway, we're going to finish off with our recent import <laughs> down the back there. Any hidden gems? I mean, three years is long enough, Jason, to be here to sort of know a, f a little bit about what's going on. Oh, it takes yeah. years to peel back the layers of the onion. Oh, stop it. Um, I would say my hidden gem is another natural feature of, of Hamilton. I know if anyone's been to Taitua, has anyone been to Taitua? Uh, Bolton? Yay, fantastic. <laughs> Um, it is not that big white dairy factory out towards Bronzeville. That's called Tatua. Okay, <laughs> Tatua is where the collection of trees are, and it's um, it was obviously gifted to the city. And if you ever go out there in autumn, it is awesome. I mean, you just see the changing colours of all the trees. It's quiet. There's crazy chickens. Um, yeah, as you know, yeah, Robo they take chickens. you, don't they? Um, as opposed to as opposed to our uh, friendly chickens that um, <laughs> gift you eggs. They no, they range crazy. Yeah. And you can get married there. Yeah, you can. So. No roses, but, you know, really cool places. Yeah, it's a really beautiful space. I personally am really excited about what's happening at the Meteor. That was my hidden gem choice. Mm. The yeah. Meteor Literary Salon, which happens once a month, where you get readers and writers coming in and talking and reading their work and reading essays. And um, a really nice synergy with um, some university artists and readers, residents have done stuff there. The Performance Cafe that they have there, which is free to roll along to. I mean, you're going to see some really textured carry-on. Are but you the adults? Yes. Oh, not me, no. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm retired. <laughs> I, I do uni gigs. Um, <laughs> but that is, that's a really, really special place, I think, and really coming into its own. And if you do get out to Raglan, which isn't really Hamilton, but it kind of is, don't tell them that because, oh, precious much. But <laughs> go out to down Te Hutiwai Road to Raglan Recycling Centre to Kahu's Nest. The most amazing clothing, used items, and all the money which is different to Hamilton's dump shop, which all goes to a private concern, just quietly. Um, all the money that's raised at Cahoo's Nest goes back into recycling and environment issues and, and initiatives in Raglan. And honestly, in the free pile, allocate an hour. Come on, let's get in there. <laughs> This whole outfit. Serious. Um, I washed it, shut up. Um, anyway, so yeah, some great hidden gems, and I'm sure you've got a lot of your own, so please, if you are tweeting from the gig, Love the Tron, the Hidden Gems, do it. Tweet now, tweet it, abso, abso Tashley. We're going to move on, though, to um, something that I think is quite interesting. Um, people talking trash about Hamilton. Quite, quite frankly, I, I reviewed a comedy festival show a couple of years ago, five international male comedians, and each one of them came out. They'd only been in the country maybe three or four days, and each of them came out and had a derogatory joke about Hamilton. When the fifth guy came out and he started, I went, not again. And he went, oh, sorry, in his accent. Let's make him British or dork. Um, <laughs> he just went, oh, sorry. That's what we were told is the place to take the piss out of. As a Hamiltonian, that, oh, you know, I did the, it's okay face. <laughs> um, but it's, I mean, it's hard. You've got no right of response when you're in the audience of a show. But it's weird when you think that people out there are, are calling up our town as the place to take the fun out of. And, and so I throw it to you guys, maybe to Jason first of all, because I, I feel like you might have some acerbic comebacks um, <laughs> for people who talk smack about our town. Okay, I would normally have a lovely pause, go, hmm, look thoughtful, thoughtful's really good, and then say, I'm trying to see it from your point of view, but unfortunately I cannot get my head through the smog, pollution, and traffic <laughs> congestion from where you're from, so that's pretty much us. Yeah, there is a lot of it that comes from north, actually. There's a lot of Auckland, uh, Aucklanders that, yeah, that bit like bit, to yeah. unleash the hates on us. And I mean, mm. Jess, you're originally from Dunedin, from so Dunedin. you're very fortunate to be allowed here and then to stay. <laughs> Cal <laughs> privilege. Um, but, you well, know. I, grew, I grew up with it in Dunedin too, right? Because Dunedin is, is like the gumboot of New Zealand. It's, mm. it's, it's right down the bottom there. And I love Dunedin still. Not nearly as much as I love the Tron. But it's okay, don't tell them that. So I'm recording it. So oh, <laughs> oh, my mum's not going to be pleased. You know what I see? I see it a bit like people, people tear shreds off Hamilton. And I see it a bit like when I grew up, my sister was allowed to take the mickey out of me. She was allowed to say whatever she wanted about me. I was allowed to say what I wanted about her. Not really. She'd give me a hiding. She's older than me. That's why. Uh, she gave me a hiding. It's not that I'm weak. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. But 
But like, you know, anybody, <laughs> she's, yeah. anybody else say something about me and my sister's the first to be wagging the finger, oh no you didn't, I'm sorry. It's, it's the same sort of thing, you know. We, yeah, yeah, she's a, yeah, she's a small, aggressive, yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> distracting me, boys. <laughs> just stop it. So we're just going to throw quickly to Julia. What, what's your? Oh, I've got, just, I've, got a, I've got something I say. No, can I, can I, I go no, in respect. But are we? Have we found it? I've have found we, it. Have I've we the, okay. My and my no. my best comeback is, well, it's nice to. S <laughs> awesome. It's nice to see that your mind's so open, so open, in fact, that even intelligent thought just passes straight through it. Beautiful. I think wow. that, I think that's pretty good. I that's think pretty that's good. pretty good. Yeah, and they, they usually go well. So, that's that's right, because that little gap's <laughs> shut again. Exactly. Julia, what about yourself? I mean, you've spent a bit of time living in Auckland. You've only just recently emigrated back. Yeah, we, we got a pretty tough time when we said we were moving back to Hamilton. Mm. All the jokes came out, which they were, they were pretty lame, to be honest. Um, and I got a lot working in tourism as well, because everyone's got their 10 cents. Um, I used to just say to people, but it's the city of the future. Um, I don't know if it worked. I was, I was, no, I was never very good at comebacks, but to be quite honest, I was so proud of coming from Hamilton, being in Auckland, that not many people slagged it off um, until the very end when we were leaving, because they knew how passionate we were about Hamilton, and yeah, we were just lucky that we... We didn't get it too much, but it's certainly there in Auckland. They're just yeah. jealous, though, I think. I was living in Auckland when I got offered the job at More FM in 2002, and everyone went, if you move there, your life is over. <laughs> and the thing was, I was like, no way. I felt an intense amount of opportunity here. And, yeah. the, and mm. the weird thing is that when it came time for that contract to end, I thought, oh, my God, I could go back to Auckland now. <laughs> because this is where my real life began, you know, I think. This is where you find your place to stand, I feel, I for lots so of people. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. You really are. Robin, as a professor well, of geography well, as, as well. As a professor of geography, as a Hamilton born and bred, yeah. I'm just totally over the trash talking yeah. of Hamilton, the Paul yeah. Henry comments that, you know, I'm just... It's kind of tired. It's tired, and I think these days I just, I don't engage with it. I'm just... No, because I think all it ends up in is this kind of bidding war about place, you know, so is... Is the Tron better than Palmerston North? Yes! Is yeah. Palmerston North yes. better than Manarewa or Otara? Or, no, I don't want to go there. It's just, it's a kind of place-based discrimination. It's bullying. It's like, no. Over it. Invercargill. <laughs> and on and on it goes. Yeah, the, how do you know the places in the hierarchy? Yeah. 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 Hamilton. And it, well, it, what is weird though, when you see in media that the, every year there's another study out about the most progressive city in the world, or the most user-friendly city in the world, or the most fun city, or the most business-minded, or what did Wellington get it for? Windy, I don't know, whatever. I grew up in Wellington. <laughs> Dead to me. But, <laughs> I, I, yeah, but, but wow. that's the thing, there's always, there's always going to be some <laughs> overarching... Yeah thing, some media or some overpresence that is going to encourage people to think about their own worth mm. uh, in relation to where they live or where they come from. And that, so that's kind of sad, I think. Mm. Brian? Yeah, I just... I just you wanted, left Edinburgh. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I, look, I, I just think that um, the most negative comments that I've received from ha about Hamilton have been people who perhaps don't know anything about Hamilton, yeah. to be honest. When you drill down to it, they haven't lived here. They, they just got on this bandwagon, so, this mm -hmm. sort of stereotype a, kind of thing. And, yeah. uh, and you know, and I, I, it, it, it's a bit like um, <coughs> Auckland is to New Zealand as, uh, can I say, the US is to the world. They're kind of a bit self-absorbed. Sorry. Yeah. They can be in a bit of a dome. Like, like, remember that drama on television, the dome? You know, it's hard to get out, hard to get in. Uh, it's kind of similar. And, I, and, and uh, yeah, I think we've, we should take a sense of healthy pride in, in, our, in our city. Yeah. Uh, we've got a lot to offer. We have indeed. Yeah. Thank you. Nice way to finish too. I'm gonna I'm gonna go down to this question because I think this is quite interesting, and I might actually go back and start with you, Brian. If you could open a business in Hamilton tomorrow, what would it be, and why? Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for that. Um, you know, I th I thought about this, and I, I you know there's there's utopia, there's you know. There's a whole bunch of stuff, but you know, I actually think I'd probably start the business that I'm in at the moment, and it sounds almost cliche. You almost expect that, but actually, really, I think. Okay, that moving on to Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> See, I actually think that the physical environment, where we live, what surrounds us, how we interact, has a great effect on our health, both individually, emotionally, physically, but also corporately, socially, the, the environment in which we, in, you know, yeah. within which we live. And so I think I'd probably be involved in architecture and urban design. I think I'd probably do that again. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know what that is? I Yoke. couldn't think of anything else. That's what that is right there. Jesse, if you could, if you could open a business, like the world's your oyster. Well, I'd get Brian to design it for a start. Yeah. You're a champion, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, no. The band of brothers. <laughs> Hon honestly, um, it's, there's nothing new, but it would be cafe slash bar slash music instrument store, all in one with awesome couches and chill out spaces, <laughs> pretty much my lounge, <laughs> sort of. Sort of like, like friends. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I like, honestly, like, like, Hamilton people are so cool. Coffee is awesome. Beer is awesome. Music is awesome. People are awesome. Imagine all of that just like chilling out. I'd be like in heaven if I could hang out in that and that could be my business. Oh, just actually free coffee, free beer. It doesn't matter. Free coffee. I'd be terrible at business. It, it would just, I wouldn't okay. make much money from it, but that'd be cool. That's what I'd do. Vote for me, for me. Hey. <laughs> don't, don't. Okay, so from another, I, it's interesting because we've got our three imports sitting on one side and our three local produce mm. over here. But Jason, yeah. what would you do? What would you do with the town? Um, I would probably, I think the city would, would, would really thrive with a really good old fashioned department store. I mean, I've grown up with department stores mm. and I think Hamilton, we used to have, as you all DIC. know, uh, DIC, Decca, we had all that, but actually, can anyone remember the original department yeah. store? No, that we had on Victoria Street, and they they won was like international awards choice. for their window displays. Was like, it the Chamber House? House. Chamber, Chamber House. House. Chamber House. Very posh. Because they and they, they like won best window display in the New York yeah. Times, like back in the fifties. Like these guys were world class, and and we don't have one. And I would love to have a really cool, obviously not a, not a farmer's type department store, but kind of touching on what these guys said, the best of everything. I'd have a rooftop bar run by Good George, <laughs> fantastic, that'd be cool. <laughs> then I would have like a big atrium, like like the old farmer's department store, and in there would be milk and honey. Bring back milk and honey. And I mean, yes. we miss milk and honey, don't we, yes, in the we city? Do. Great views. You'd have music, lots of music, vinyl, DJs, um, lots of stuff, live. music. Music, that would be really cool. You'd have Gothenburg downstairs. You'd have a food market. I love food. So there's going to be lots of food in there, like a big dungeon full of food of all the great things. Dungeon. Diamonds, chocolates, Zeelong tea, all the great stuff we produce right here in Hamilton. And then, yeah, then you'd just have couches, actually. That would be quite Can cool. I just sit up? Can I sit up as part of yours? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I think that if you were going to take over the world with a, with a well, take over Hamilton with a really savvy department store, I think it's something that would be built on a lot of the personalities and the people that do create Makes and, and produce cool. in this in the city. So, yeah, and I don't see any reason why not. Farmers and the warehouse and centralised distribution has kind of wrecked um, specialty shopping to a certain degree. And I do feel there is um, a great need to increase uh, medium density housing in the centre of the city to get people back into our city because if you've been in the city at 8.30 on a Saturday night, it's very quiet and it should be really busy mm -hmm. and you know we've got a wonderful big mall that we can be really proud of because uh, it's the biggest in the southern hemisphere by crikey even then you can't get a park sometimes oh shivers <laughs> me timbers <laughs> but you know we have to pull people back from those environments and give them a center of the city that they want to be that they want to be in and i think part of that's living you know, living in the centre of the city, which I didn't, I loved, so yeah. Mm, mm. Paul, what would you open? I mean, you opened a bar, and that was pretty good. That was good fun. Yeah, that was good I, fun. I shouldn't be left in charge of such things. <laughs> <laughs> There's what? not much he should be left in charge no, of, to be fair. Dressing like himself in... Radioactive material. Yeah, I'm <laughs> fine with that. Yeah, we get on well. Um, no, uh, what I'd like to do, because the arts is very close to me, um, I'd really like to have a big... Ideally, a huge building that's got rehearsal rooms for bands, it's got rehearsal rooms for drama groups and awesome. things like that. It's got um, a recording facility. So, I mean, I, I've been to Australia and, and just hung out with friends over there who, who play in bands, and they, they drive downtown and go underground to this amazing space, and it's mm -hmm. just like all these decked out rooms that have got a PA equipment in them. It's really easy for the bands to come and go. Um, there's a little shop there that sells guitar strings and mm -hmm. pies. 
Uh, <laughs> great combo. Eyes. Great combo. No okay. beer, though. I'd put beer in wine, probably, but no couches, otherwise you'd never, never get rid of these guys. Aye, that's <laughs> true. The lounge uh, lizards. No, I'd, I'd love to do some sort of hmm. space like that for, yeah. you know, to really encourage musicians, because it's, it's bloody hard for bands when you don't have a space to make a record in. It's you know? true, man. Truly. It's true. Mm. And I think we've got some amazing talent in this. Mm. In this we, do. we do. We do. Julia, what would you open? What would you be your business? If I wanted to make some money at the moment, I'd become a real estate agent oh. in Hamilton. Oh. First home buyers, if anyone's got a house. <laughs> we're, we're trying to buy. No, but on a serious note, um, bringing international media into Hamilton, they always used to ask, what happens on the river? Where's the cafe on the river? Where's the restaurants on the river? And um, I'm really excited about the Hamilton City River Plan, I think. That's awesome, but it would be good to see it happening a bit faster. But my thing that I would open is a, a cafe on the river and lead the way. Like, I think what they're doing with Riverside Mall is, yeah. yep. is really cool, and I think mm -hmm. it would be great to see that happening yeah. a little bit more in the CBD to try and Gothenburg. bring a few more people in. Rocks. Yeah, in well Gothenburg. Well over there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, oh, and it's, yeah. it's a beautiful river, and we should be utilising it. It's, it's a gem of our city, and, yeah, I, I think it would be great to see a lot more happening down yeah. there. And it is, it, it draws people back into the centre of the city, you know, it's just <laughs> changing, changing things. Oh, I've gone, I've gone into a reflective space. I'd really, <laughs> I have, really? no, because I'd really like to, <laughs> yeah, thank you, thanks, you Professor Dr. You. Robin. Come back, come um, back. What would you open if you just decided, oh, right. oh this oh, university share? I think I'll have your sort of basement in your posh department store for a mm. sort of gourmet food space, mm. because I really lament um, Nosh, the gourmet supermarket, closing in... 2013, mm -hmm. and there was something else out at Tiawa at the base, another Faro, yeah. Faro Faro closed Faro. as yeah. well. So I feel like Hamiltonians are, are, are in there eating at a lot of, we've got a lot of wonderful restaurants, Chimchuri and, you know, all sorts, Gothenburg's moved down by the river, but I feel we need more gourmet food supplies for our own little yeah. dinner soirees that we have at Truly. home. Although we do have uh, <laughs> the massive farmer's market yes, up we at Tirapa. And, and that is good. That there is, good. is now a smaller breakaway faction oh, rebels, down at the old venue of the Hamilton farmer's market down at the um, Claudelands car or the car park of a, yes. yeah, the bridge. And um, fantastic, great eggs and you know, it's good to see Mr. Roach and remind him who you are every week. I love it. He's losing it. I love it. Um, and, and, uh, and so that's really great. I myself would love to set up a toasty nook for toasted sandwiches. Yes. Oh, I like it. I love toasties. Yeah. Look at people yeah. clapping that. <laughs> all right. We're doing it. Yeah. Um, but we do all of these things? We could, do, we could do all of these things. This we could do all of these thing. things. The other thing I'd really like to see for Hamilton is for Hamilton's amazing mental health services and outreach and creative therapy that we have um, in, in the centre of the city um, become more available and more visible yeah. in our town. Because actually we've got a lot of creative people who are, uh, you know, anyway, we're going to move on because we have to and it's just it's going to go to a place where we all might just have to drop everything and hug and... But, you know, we're, we all know what I'm talking about, right? Like Depression that. isn't something we just chuck in the corner and figure it'll go away when you, eventually. And it's very much come to the fore, given that our, our you know, Farm Strong has brought rural depression out into the fore. And, and I think that that's one of many, many mental health issues that are going on in our community. And just by making it a little bit more visible and making it a little bit less, oh, tuck it away, might actually help uh, in recovery and management as well as a, awareness raising. And, you know, Hamilton is a trailblazing town, so we could really make a mark there. Yeah. Um, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to go down to this one. And I think we've already answered the question because everyone's decided that we're going to have a, <laughs> a super store in the middle of a super department <laughs> store and everyone's yeah, going to have yeah, their little yeah, nook of it. it. Yeah. Um, but is Hamilton a village? Yes or no? Good or bad? Are we a, are we a village, Robin? Well, no. The geographer in me says no. Villages are just, they, they sort of have a couple of hundred or maybe a thousand people, but... When I think of village, I think of I think of retirement village. I think of little sort of we Miss, Miss Marple. We do. We, I think of Miss Marple murder yeah. mysteries. I, I don't know maybe Cambridge a village, but Hamilton. No, I think we're a proper city. Yeah. We, we we've got a there's a whole lot of difference in in ages, ethnicities, and and uh, different populations. I. I feel, no, I don't feel a village. I think we're city. But I know what you're saying about communities. There's certainly lots of communities in, 
uh, within the city, but, but no, I'm not feeling the village thing. I guess, can I? Yes, I, yes, Jason. Um, thanks, <coughs> thanks, Jan Marie. Uh, I think, I guess, because um, I, I see what you're saying there, Robin, and I think um, my, immediately when I hear are we a village, I think of are we, uh, do, do we pull together? Are we together in things as opposed to, I mean, I'm not a geographer, I'm not, I'm not too <laughs> sure. And I know my wife and I, we foster, we have foster children, and um, we literally tell our friends often, who go, oh, I couldn't do what you do. We say, you don't need to do what we do, you just need to be part of that village. Because the saying is it takes a village to raise a child, right? Even more so when it's a child that you know nothing about. It's, it's, it's like, man, if we don't have community, we've got nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I love, and it, it goes back to some of what we've said already, Hamilton and its people. Mm -hmm. it's something That's just something you don't find many other places. The way the people will come together, the, the you know, we didn't really know each other before we met tonight, you know, and, and some conversations just beforehand, and it's all like, yeah, we're in this together, Rawr! let's take on the world, and like, we know that, we know that we're all, let's open a department store, change the world, <laughs> yeah, I'll have couches, he'll have practice rooms, and, but, but like in everyone in this room, you know, we've come, it's called an ode to Hamilton, and it's like, you come because that's of interest, we're like, you know what, an ode to Hamilton, Arr! together, village, I, I picture if a village got attacked, we'd all be in it together fighting for this village, you know, putting out the fires that, that the, the yep. mean people from Robin Hood are trying to can set we, fire. And can we be village mentality but city strong? Ooh. 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 Catchphrase. Yeah, absolutely. Asking the hard questions at 20 to 6, Ab 7, I, I don't ab know. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I say absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Jan Marie, I think there's something about the whole, and I tend to agree mm. with you from, a, I guess, a a literal perspective. But there's something about the word village that conjures up for me a sense of, of, of a relational intimacy uh, of our city that, that I don't think we can get in larger cities. By that, I mean, um, come with me to pack and save. Not literally. Yeah. Come with me <laughs> in your imagination to pack and <laughs> save. <laughs> I've, I, I've, had a, I've had a stoush with some business person. I've had a stoush with him or her. And, and I'm walking down past the little campfire that people tend to have in the middle of pack and save and toasting marshmallows and get around them. Anyway, you go past them. And around, around the aisle comes towards you someone, this person that you actually had the stoush with. And I have a choice. Do I do the moonwalk and or pretend I'm on a phone or do I pretend I'm picking out my baked beans and selecting palms over whatever? And I, uh, the reality is it dawned on me. I've actually got to engage with that person. Mm -hmm. So I cannot burn bridges in this city. Yeah. I cannot burn bridges. Mm -hmm. Equally, that person could be my client who comes to me and says to me, so how is the job going? I've got to be responsive with my, with my business. I've got to be agile and responsive. Yeah. I'll see them at the next Chamber of Commerce function, or, or, or watching the kids playing soccer on Saturday morning. I'll see them. And I could say, I could say, Jan, Jan Marie, I could say, oh, we started it, which is code for I haven't started it, <laughs> <laughs> if we're honest. Uh, but I've got to be honest about, you know, so it, it helps to keep us responsive. So I think that relational intimacy level is, is, is good in Hamilton, which I don't see in larger cities. Yeah. Mm. That is definitely something that when the outsiders come down, I don't need to call them Aucklanders. Yeah. They're just not us. <laughs> but they're they? coming down. They right? come down. When the, yeah, yeah. When, the, when the outsiders come down, I had a friend recently who's lived a long time overseas, come back to New Zealand, lived in Auckland, went back to Wellington for a while, and is now working in Rotorua of all places. But, you know, like from, from all this metropolitan carry on to Rotorua, the three days before her job started, she came and stayed with us. And I took her to the farmer's market, and she went, Oh, it's amazing how she asked a question just under her breath, and the storeholder went, Oh, honey, where you need to go is a da 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 And she went, that person talked to me like they knew me. Did you, do you know that person, Jen? No? That's oh, my God. It's amazing. Like she, like, she helped me like she knew me. Yeah. So we, we have that yeah. real strength here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. we're a village. I concede. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, everybody. No, 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 no. Maybe we're a collection of villages. Yeah. Oh, because yes. we like have it. cool neighbourhoods. Like we've got Frankton, we've got Hamilton East, yeah, right. we've point. got Queenwood, we've got like St that. Andrews, we've got all these cool little villages. And that's it. But the cool thing is like what you guys have said. Mm. We, we are a village overall because it's the... You know, we, we, have, we have a cathedral. I think the bishop's here. We have a cathedral as well. <laughs> yeah. We have a town square. We have all these initial landmark features of a village that actually people are, are bound to. Um, but we have all that great values of, of a great village. And mm -hmm. I think that's... And the, and the gift of giving. Like, this city gives. 
I've never lived anywhere where people give so much, yeah, whether good. it be their time, whether it be we've, we've been built on our benefactors or the, or the forefathers of our city that have given so much to what we have in our city today. We've got world-class facilities here, and yeah. that's been because of what we've created as a city. You know, the Hamilton Gardens were, were, were oh. built by the city. It's yeah. an old dump, but now look at it. It's world-class, yeah. award-winning gardens, but Hamiltonians built it. Founders, I mean, I could, of course, I've got the council speak. I could go on about our great <laughs> facilities, but, you know, Pretty much the good stuff, the good stuff. A collection of villages with the village I like feel. It. I like it. Nice. I like it. Nice, way, nice way to finish that. Nice way to finish that off. <laughs> I, we, it's obvious right now we're not going to get through all seven, right? The magnificent seven questions are going to become like the magnificent five pretty swiftly. <laughs> As MC, I need to choose which question and I just, I think we can do this real quick. I'm going to throw it to Julia. Do we need a campaign to bring people back to the Tron? No, I think the Auckland House prices are doing it for us. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not Troners. That's just people. <laughs> no, I think on a serious note, though, I think we need to do some work around bringing um, some skilled workers into Hamilton. And For example, at Smart Track at the moment, we, we're trying to recruit for some um, what are they called? De developers, sorry, I should know that, mm -hmm. work with them every day. And, and we're struggling to get developers um, to work for us. So I think there's a need to do a little bit of work to get um, some particular jobs back to Hamilton, but um, it's, it's exciting to see how many people are coming back. Three of our um, friends from Auckland, they're all in the process of moving back, um, some from Christchurch. Yeah, I think, I think we're doing okay. I'm going to put it out there as someone who, like, I was, my parents were married here and had my older sister here and then, then they moved to Wellington to have me, or had me there, and I grew up there. And I, no amount of campaigning is going to bring me back to Wellington. Mm. Hamilton is my tūranga waiwai, this is where I need to be, this is where I feel, this is home. So, do we need a campaign to bring people back? I think what we need to do is be the great city we are and want people to be part of that. Yeah. Mm. I think people will come back once they come back and visit. Everyone needs to go away sometimes. Yeah. We all we want to get out, you all need to experience the world, but then when you come back and people come back, like Julie, and they come back after three or four years and they go, oh my God, the city's changed. Yeah. And you look, at, you look at it through different eyes because you appreciate what you've got here once you leave. It sounds terrible, but when you come back, you then realise this is a great city. It is the most livable city in the country. And um, yeah. People have so got great different. Time. So it's, it's different. different. So it's we different. don't need a campaign. Like people will naturally experience it and think, yep, no, I'm going home now. We're going to come back to Hamilton. Yeah, but you're Tauiwi, essentially. You're from Whangarei. Ooh, Is there ever going to be We're still a in dazzling island. campaign in the Metro magazine that sucks you back up to Whangarei? I can't see any argument. I can't. I've been back to Wellington. Stink. Yeah. <laughs> see ya. Oh. I, I don't, I don't, I, but I guess what, yeah, the Hamilton's different. I guess if I'd been born here, I might say the same and that people do need to go away to come back and appreciate it. But I, I don't feel, anyone that's going to be brought back to Hamilton by a shiny advertising campaign, no, I, don't, no, I don't feel, I don't know that we want them. Can, can I speak? Yes, you can well, speak now. Well, because I Googled this, so I want to share, oh, yes. okay, I want good. to share what I found on Google. <laughs> there have been some appalling campaigns for places. This was the big thing in the 90s, is that cities yeah. decided they all needed their campaigns to try and bring in people. And here are a few classics. Apparently, in 1995, the Hutt Valley promoted its city with the slogan, Right Up My Hutt Valley. <laughs> <laughs> and they Ouch. produced 2,000 promotional stickers. Oh. 2,000. Another, 2000. And here's oh. another good one. Dunedin had... It's all right heart. here. That's what they said. I remember it. <laughs> do you remember it? They don't turn I left. They never well. turn left in Dunedin, do yeah, they? No, they always turn right. right. Bill yeah, yeah. Dunedin, right. Dunedin it's had... All right. oh, it's all right. It's all right here. It's you get shit. them in control. I get them in control. Tootie tootie. Dunedin had a slogan, it's all right here. But of course, people wrote in and said that it sounds more like it's okay here, I guess. Like, it's all right. As opposed to, it's all right. So you can see how these things can go terribly wrong, in actual fact. And Foxton had, 
Foxton, the Fox Town. Before in 2005, they took down the welcome sign, deciding it really wasn't going to work. Foxy. But we've had our own disasters. We've had the Hamilton more than you expect, of course. Which is so... Remember. How, how much more shy retiring youngest sister of the family that was never heard is that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hamilton just going... It's we were city of fountains. We had Fountain oh, City fountain without city. really having any fountains. We have the fountain. No, we've got a fountain. There's a fountain by the roundabout. Yeah. My founder's theatre, it just never goes. Yeah. yeah. And we've got a Fountain City motel, which is sort of a hangover from the Fountain City <laughs> days. But, <Yep>. you know, <laughs> that's, that's not so good. Really, I know, that's, not, that's not, not good. Yeah. So, Hamilton. Yeah. Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah. Hamilton. Hamilton. I think we copied Where that from London, but it didn't quite work in the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't, what? What's it? Just I. We don't have any time. Are you kidding me? Um, we have some time. What? What's a good slogan for Hamilton? Any? Pe ste Brian. You can call me Brian if you wish. Um, uh, what? Uh, what did you call me? Brian. That's oh, all right then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can call me anything. Else. Or should I, I have called you Brian? <laughs> Brian. Brian. Uh, <laughs> Alan. 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 Yeah. I don't have okay. a slogan. I don't have a slogan for Hamilton. No. I, no, not at all. I don't. Yeah, you know, I think I think it needs a brand, but I don't think it's something that is professionally branded. I think it develops its own brand through the people. Yeah. You know, and I think um, you know the, just the, the communication interaction we have with others, it will develop its own sense of self. I think you, you look at the the success of the Love the Tron hashtag. Yeah, um, mm. it, it's pretty organic, right? It's not something that's produced by by. I mean, Good George put it on their billboards. No, no, Good George put the on. You know. It, they, they can have the Love the Tron there. No one owns Love the Tron, hashtag, but people use it, they go with it. You can't have the Hamilton on on there. No, get that off the, get that off the billboard, don't have that there. Sorry, City Council. <laughs> Is that you? Probably. <laughs> no, no, you're gone, you're not. I liken it to the Lewis Road Creamery Milk. Mm. Yeah? Did that, was there big campaigns about, look at this chocolate milk, you know? No, people are just climbing over each other at the supermarkets to get it because it was what it was. Hamilton, do we need a campaign to get people back? Nah. Because we are the Lewis Road Creamery. We, we're the Lewis Road Creamery of New Zealand, you know. I liken it to Devil Skin and, and you know, Paul, Paul and the guys, they just work. They just do it. Yeah. yeah. They're not like, hey, check us out! Of course, they're, they're yeah. they, they push themselves, promote themselves, but they do it by being good. They do it by not sucking. Yeah. Hamilton, right? we don't suck. Hamilton, yeah. we don't suck, honestly! <laughs> Wow. We don't, well, have More we, than you expect. <laughs> we suck yeah. less than you expect. <laughs> we suck more than you say we do. <laughs> hang on, <laughs> less than, we, less less than you think we do. Now, isn't it? That's right. Um, That's why slogans don't work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't, yeah, love the Tron. Hamilton is we. You know, it is what it is. What you get is what you see. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Us. Well, that's <laughs> right. But he's, you know, the thing is that Paul quite Henry often those people slogan. who are busy pointing their finger away have forgotten that there's three pointing back at them. Oh, I like you know, that. You know, let's Okay, we've got very short time. Is it okay for us to feel smug? Oh, this is so... Oh. Is it okay for us to feel smug about our somewhat affordable housing, our great lifestyle and no traffic issues? We do have traffic issues, actually. Well, it's, it, minutes a day. Yeah. <laughs> minutes a day are absorbed where my very large car is just eating gas, waiting. And, and then I don't wait anymore. But it's fine. I mean, but we do have traffic. Like, saying we don't have traffic is ridiculous. We do. We have, we have traffic. You ever tried to get to the base on the weekends when there's like a massive sale on at Farmers? Because that never happens. It's like Briscoe's. Like when does Briscoe's have a sale? Ever. 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 And you ever. know, so you got to drop everything and get in the car and get your neighbours in to get to Briscoe's, Al. I walk to avoid the traffic. Killed it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> have you had enough? Is that what that is? You don't have to skirt back because I can still see you. Like, uh, I always find public shame is perfect. Um, and dealing with small children. No, but seriously, is, are we are we right to be smug, Paul? Um, totally. Yeah. Yeah, man. We're we're, we're living in a beautiful jewel of the country. <clears throat> um, other people are less fortunate. 
and that's their own choice, so damn right, I can be smug about it. Um, I, I think we, the people that um, dis Auckland, your, your Mike Hoskins and uh, dis Hamilton, sorry, Mike Hoskins and people like that, and, and <coughs> whoever told those comedians, oh, pick on Hamilton, fine, we don't want them here, we've got cool people yeah, here. Agree. We yeah, only want good. cool people here. Yeah. 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 So, yep, yeah, we can be smug and they can diss us all we like, you know, when people diss Hamilton in front of me, you know what I do? Show look us. at them, uh, flick them on the nose, just like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, it worked for me as a youngster and it works now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to sit over uh, here. Yeah. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, I could go, we could go on for hours and hours and hours, but I think, I think we're all resolute. Uh, I think we should join... Um, uh, should join? No. <laughs> These guys, I, you should join me in thanking by a massive round of applause our fabulous panellists Julia Cook, Jason Dawson, Robin Longhurst, Jesse O'Brien, and Brian Square. <laughs> Hamilton City <laughs> is defined by its giving, it's defined by its land and its people. There's no pressure or expectation of people in this town. Uh, we have a sensational ba base of ordinary people doing extraordinary things on a daily basis. We have a great and building subculture of art and acceptance in our town. And, and it, to be fair, if I use an ink pen and I can go to at least three different places to get cartridges to refill my ink pen from Germany. So we are internationally minded. <laughs> I can go to at least two or three dozen different very well reputed tattoo artists to get ink of a different kind if I so desire. And in this town, people are going to be interested rather than quietly judging you. Or if they are going to judge you, they'll say it to your face instead of to everyone else they know. Yeah. <laughs> Hamilton is on a journey or has Hamilton arrived? We are a constant progression and we are our people and our land. So keep walking the walk. Keep, keep true to this place. Keep your roots firmly planted. Watch us prosper. Watch us work. Thank you. And now this guy. <laughs> Just be careful with the health and safety on that stool, uh, Jamari, if that's okay. <clears throat> yes, it is. Um, Jamari, thank you. Uh, it's, it's okay, you can stop now. Uh, thanks. Um, uh, for uh, uh, your work uh, in bringing all those comments together tonight. Uh, thank you everyone uh, for coming along uh, to this, uh, the last of our Winter Lecture Series. Uh, the Winter Lecture Series will resume about this time next year, uh, so keep an eye on uh, what's coming up uh, next year. We'll try to present some different things, some different ideas, and some different people providing uh, thoughts about the city and the things that you're interested in. Would you join me in uh, thanking once again Jan-Marie, Julia, Jason, Robin, Jesse, Paul and Brian. Thank you. Thank you.